going on everyone? Kirk here from Motogear TV. Thank you guys for tuning in once again. I'm here to talk to you about my one year ownership experience with the BMW M2. Alright, so in doing this video, I kind of wanted to highlight the overall journey for this process, letting you guys know a little bit about where we started from to where we are now. For me, the M2 holds a very special place as far as all the other builds I've done. Not just because it's an M2, but for me, being somebody from Jamaica, owning a BMW has always been seen as a great achievement. And going one step further to actually have an M car, this is my first M car. I have to say that the journey has been a very good experience so far. And looking back at it, I'm really happy that we decided to go with the M2 in general. Now, when I decided to go ahead and look for this particular project, I wanted something that I could not only use for content, but have something that was gonna be very fun and enjoyable for me at the same time. For those of you who have been following the channel for some time now, you guys would know I had a 335 previously. That car was a very fun car to own. I learned a lot of things from it. It was my first BMW. And transitioning from that into the M2, I knew that I wanted something that I was familiar with. This car being the pre-LCI M2, it does have the N55 motor, which is something I'm very familiar with having the E90. I thought that this was going to be a really cool project, not only something that I can mod really nicely, but also be very comfortable and be a reliable daily driver. For me getting into this platform, I wanted to focus on three main areas. Firstly, was being able to learn the car properly. Second, I wanted to know that all the maintenance was up to date before I modified it. And the third thing was obviously modifying the car. Just to give you guys a rough idea of what we started off with, this is a 2017 BMW M2. I got the car with about 46,000 miles. This was a one owner car with me being the second owner. I picked this up at a dealership in South Florida and it had no accidents, bone stock. The only modification it did have to it, however, was a factory BMW M Performance exhaust. But other than that, the car was properly maintained, good service records, and that was something that really stood out to me because for me getting into this new platform, I wanted something that I could modify from scratch. This is not to say that buying a modified vehicle is a bad thing, but you really don't know what you're getting, especially if you're going to be buying somebody else's build. So having that confidence, knowing that it was well taken care of and well maintained, it was a win-win for me. Now moving on from that, we kind of went to learning the car and this was a very important stepping stone for me because in order to know what the car needs to be improved on, we have to know what the weak points are. And for me, being able to get into this car every single day, drive it around town, drive it on the highway, drive it on the streets, I was quickly able to kind of figure out exactly what I wanted to do and where I wanted to focus my energy on. For me personally, it's always important to focus on the mods that make sense and not necessarily all the mods. Because really and truly, if the modifications you're putting on your vehicle are not going to improve your overall driving experience and actually help in some regard to what you're trying to achieve, it makes no sense. For me, the overall goal for this car was to have a fun daily driver that I can enjoy on the weekends and be able to modify that I can make content for you guys. I think for all of the cars within this category, the M2 does a very good job and it's very confident in inspiring that was one of the things that stood out to me the car feels almost magnetic with the road how it handles how it responds the acceleration the braking all of those kind of tie into the overall package and for me that's a very important part because it enhances the overall driving experience now some of the things i wanted to improve on were mostly honestly cosmetics visually there were a few things for the performance i did look at as well now i am going to do a full rundown of all the mods on the car i'm going to actually be saving that for another video but this video is really just to highlight the overall ownership experience now in terms of reliability I'm very impressed to say that the BMW M2 is a pretty reliable car. From my previous experience with the E90, there are a few things that you really need to look out for. Not too much. Luckily enough, as I did mention before, this car was properly maintained. It does have all the service records and that's something that you really have to be on top of. Obviously doing your regular oil changes, checking for any type of leaks, making sure that all your belts are intact, um, not ignoring any of your check engine lights. That's a very big thing. Honestly, over the last 12 months, the car didn't really give that many issues to be honest i've only had a check engine 
when I come up just to remind me to get my oil change done and also to replace my brake fluid and for me that really gave me a good peace of mind because again this is my daily driver I do drive this to work I do drive this on the weekends and not having a car that's going to be constantly in the shop or I constantly have to work on for maintenance items was really a good thing now some of the typical maintenance things you're going to have to look out for especially with a pre-lci m2 one of the main issues i've seen especially from the engine side is leaking valve cover gaskets that's something you typically would change i want to say every 50 to 60 000 miles or if you do see it leaking over time the gaskets on these cars are very known to leak so if you do see some smoke coming from the engine it's most likely it's from that other issues would come from bad water pumps bad thermostats there have been a few instances where the n55 does have rod issues but that's very uncommon to be honest and I have heard a few people talk about doing the crank hub fix again this isn't very common especially for the N55 it's more so common on the S55 engine but for me I don't think this is something I'm gonna have to worry about just yet unless I decide to go more in power but overall those are basically the typical issues that you'd experience luckily enough again I haven't experienced anything like that over the past 12 months and I drive this car every single day very spiritedly but again it really just comes down to to having normal routine maintenance and making sure that you check the car on a regular basis. We spoke about learning the car, we spoke about the maintenance, time to move on to the modifications. Now this I think was the most fun part for me because I actually got to showcase my style and the things that I liked on the exterior and the interior of the car. Now when us modifying the car we really wanted to focus on the things that were going to make the biggest difference. Obviously we wanted the car to look clean, very visually pleasing and I think we achieved that. Everything done on the car I chose by myself. I was very particular especially with some of the parts that I put on it. I wanted to have quality parts on the car that were going to have good fitment and also be at an affordable price let's be honest not everybody has the money to put on the most expensive parts but at the same time I still wanted to find affordable parts that were still gonna fit good and overall I think everything pretty much worked out in my favor now some parts such as the wheels were a little bit more pricey than others but I think everything pretty much fits into my budget and I think that's a very important point for those of you who are looking to build your car always try to look for things that are gonna fit into your budget and if it doesn't don't be afraid to wait a few weeks or a few months to save up to get the right parts that you want it doesn't make sense to just buy a cheap part and it doesn't make sense to always just buy an expensive part. Always be willing to find something that's going to fit within your overall budget. For me the mods on the exterior were very important because I wanted to give the car a very sporty aggressive stance. Things like the front lip, lowering the car, adding new wheels to it adding some pieces of carbon fiber all of those things tied into the package that you guys see right now and even moving on to the interior of the car i wanted to give it very unique highlights so things like the light blue seat belts to the light blue gauge faces for my gauge cluster to my alcantara steering wheel wrap with the custom stitching all of those were little key highlights that i had in my head to enhance the overall look of the car and i think we really achieved it now moving from the visual modifications to the most important part the engine modifications now i had a lot of fun doing this now as far as performance bolt-on parts go i think i'm about 85 percent of the way done so far in the car we've done a front mount intercooler and a charge pipe from arm motorsports we have a turner motorsport cold air intake in it right now and as you guys know it did come with the m performance exhaust now the only things left that we have to put in that you guys are going to be seeing in a few upcoming videos we do have to put in a catless down pipe and i also have a turbo inlet and a turbo outlet pipe and i think after that we should be pretty much full bolt-ons at that point from there we're going to go ahead and get the car tuned seeing what numbers we're able to achieve with that setup i'm hoping that we get something pretty good and after that i think we're going to go ahead and mess with some fueling options and then overall goal once this project is done would be to go ahead and do a upgraded turbo now with this car there are a few things that i don't like and these things are honestly not deal breakers it's very minimal mostly things i don't like from my personal opinion now if i had to kind of list out a few things that i wish it came with i feel like for this being a m car it should have had a few more tech features one of which is the heads up display if i'm not mistaken i think the m2 out of the entire m range is the only car that doesn't have this feature again it's not really a big deal but it would have been nice to have that from the factory i don't even think the m2 competition or the m2 cs has it to be honest um, but that would have been something i would have wanted to have another improvement that i would have wanted um, because this is the pre-lci it doesn't have all the nice 
digital gauges or the upgraded LED headlights or taillights. As you guys would know, I did change the taillights, but the headlights I haven't done as yet. The only modification I've done to the headlights so far is to add upgraded bulbs. It would be nice to have those hexagon angel eyes. I think that would add a very nice touch to the front end. Now it might be something that might come in the future so we'll just have to see. Another thing I would have improved on that I haven't seen a lot of people really highlight especially when talking about the M2 is the placement of these seat belts. So as you guys will see I have my seat belt resting nice and firmly on the side bolster and that's because it is so hard to put these seat belts on if it's not right there. For me it's way too far back and it's a bit of a struggle when putting them on so having them here nice and conveniently is makes it much easier to put on. It would have been nice if they had a strap design that attached to the seat and moving on to the seat i think that would be the next big thing now don't get me wrong the seats that come in the pre-lci m2 they're nice they're comfortable it's good for long drives i do like the extended bolstering but the main thing is it doesn't hold you into place what would be nice if this had a full-fledged bucket option obviously like the m2 competition in my opinion when they debuted this car in 2016 i thought that should have been one of the first options they put into it especially being an m car but it seems that they were saving it for the competition version nothing wrong with that i do think somewhere down the line in my ownership if i am able to get a nice bucket seat i will switch it out i want something that's going to be able to position me properly and still be comfortable for daily driving for me the sock seats that come with the m2 is just not as snug as i wanted it to be so i think that could be a pretty cool modification somewhere down the line but overall i think the car provides a very great driving experience again it's very confidence inspiring very predictable it's very hands-on and i do like how the car responds especially while driving the car can be a great daily driver it can be a fun weekend car it can be a car that you take to the track it really depends on what your purpose is and for me right now in the past year i think it's coming on to that point where it's becoming the ultimate daily driver Again, with all of this, I'm really just trying to take everything in stages, having fun with it, learning the car as I go. To me, the M2 has been a pretty cool journey to say the least. I'm happy to where we are with the car today and trust me, there's going to be a lot more content coming for it. This has only been my first year, so I know that over the next 12 months, the car is going to get even more insane and I just want to be able to say big ups and thank you to all of the supporters and all of the subscribers that have been watching the videos over the last few months i know we've been kind of slow to release a lot of content but trust me there's going to be a lot coming up for this summer with my build with mark's m3 build i know you guys are staying tuned for that as well i really want to be able to see how far the m2 goes as far as performance and the overall look there are a few things that i am considering to do to it that i'm still on the fence about but over the next few months i think we should be able to come to a really good decision on the direction we want to take it to again if you guys enjoyed this type of content please stay tuned if you're not subscribers yet please make sure you're subscribed and just be ready for the journey that's about to come now i know we have viewers and subscribers from all over the world i just want to say a big shout out to all the people back home in jamaica watching our content i know there's not a lot of jamaican youtubers in the states so having you guys back home watch us has been very inspiring we really appreciate all the support so far and i hope you guys are staying tuned for what's to come all right, so that's going to do it for today's episode. If you guys enjoyed it, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Tune in for the next one. And until then, we're gone.